Welcome to the AdSense session. Uh, how I'm going to start off is by giving out a mug. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question not related to AdSense, a very general knowledge question. You guys watch movies? You guys watch English movies? You remember a movie called Jerry Maguire? Tom Cruise? Ronnie Zellweger? What's the one line that's the most famous line from that movie? A mug to you guys. I heard somebody say, that's the one, yeah, mug for you, yeah, 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 that's the one, mug for you. So it says, show me the money, and he says it many times, and he says it loud, right? He says, show me the money, and that's what we are here to make you do. We're going to show you the money through AdSense. To begin with, I'd like to start off with a video. Uh, just a quick run through. Can we have the video, please? My AdSense revenue from uh, my website has enabled me to uh, give up my main job and work myself. My AdSense uh, revenue has allowed me to travel the world. I'm not tied to a desk, I'm not tied to a time schedule. I've got more freedom to work how I want to work. I found myself blogging, you know, on the river of, a, of an Italian mountain top. At the end of this month I'm buying a small fishing board. I've been able to go uh, on holidays. It's allowed me the freedom to work from home. Our first check we used to purchase a Wii for the developers. We bought a barbecue for our terrace. My AdSense revenue has enabled me to give up work and be a full-time father to my two children. Well, AdSense has enabled me to keep the site online. What it mostly does, really, is just let me do what I do without it costing me any money. Very good. So this is what AdSense can really do for you, just a brief about what AdSense can do for you as a business. If you're a large corporation, small corporation, it doesn't make a difference. We can help you do things beyond just run your business by helping you keep your employees happy, like buying a barbecue or maybe buying a boat. So let's start with some fun facts about AdSense. First of all, how many of you have a website? That's a fair amount of people, yeah? How many of you make money from your website? That's like 10% of the people here. Okay. Good session for you guys to be at then. Let's see how well you guys know about AdSense. At least the guys who use it. Anyone here can tell me when was the first prototype for AdSense built and by whom was it built? If you give me by when, I'll give you a mug. I, you gotta be a little louder. Shout out, let's hear you guys. Come on, Hyderabad. Sorry? 2003? 2005, 2006, 2008, sorry, 2001, 1997, 2003, I still haven't heard the answer, 1999, 98, did I hear somebody say 98 here, all right, 98 it is. Yeah, one mug for you. <laughs> so the first prototype was built in 1998 by a couple of guys called Jilad Ilbaz and Adam Weisman. Uh, it wasn't really called AdSense then, when they built it. Anybody know what it was called before it was called AdSense? I don't hear answers unless I say one mug for you and then suddenly I hear a lot of answers. <laughs> double click? No, not double click. Pay click. No, not pay click. Okay, it's a, it's called Applied Semantics. Applied Semantics was what AdSense was originally called before it was renamed to AdSense. For those of you who use AdSense, I don't know how long you've been using it, but how often do you think the AdSense interface, account interface for users has been revamped from the time it started? Three? Six, 
five, eight, seven times. You're getting colder. From, from three, we went to ten. I'm saying you're getting colder. Five? No. I've heard twice. Somebody said twice. And the gentleman who wins the second mug of the day. So it's been, it's been revamped twice. Once when it was acquired uh, in 2003 by Google, and the second time in 2010 when we revamped our interface to the new uh, AdSense front end that you see today. So anyway, this is going to be what I'm going to be briefly talking about. I'm going to be taking you through what Google AdSense is all about. Uh, you know, how does Google AdSense work? What are the basic benefits of using AdSense? Uh, some of stuff about policy, uh, take you through some of the AdSense features, and maybe if we have time, we'll talk a little bit about some of the other publisher solutions that we have. So what is Google AdSense? I just said, remember the Jerry Maguire line, show me the money, and as Abbas introduced the session, Google AdSense is a flexible, a very easy way to earn revenue online. You all have, you, most of you have websites. I saw loads of hands go up. When I asked how many of you make money off it, maybe 5% of those hands went up. Which basically means that 95% of you can also make money off your websites. And this money can be significant. How do you earn this money? You earn this money through serving ads on your website, right? Minalini just now spoke about uh, how advertisers reach their users through ads that are served. You, as a publisher, can also be part of that ecosystem and earn, you know, earn, earn money through ads that are served on your site. Remember, it's a three pro I mean, it's a triangle. I, I was going to say it's a three-pronged triangle. All triangles are three-pronged. Uh, it's, it's a triangle. The user is right at the top, right? The advertiser is one of the other vertex, and the publisher is one of the other vertex of the triangle. How do you earn the most revenue from all of your inventory? Now, when you say earn revenue from your inventory, we just don't mean earn revenue from your websites. We also mean earn revenue from your desktop site, you mean you earn revenue from your mobile site. You have videos. You earn money from videos on your website. You're a, you know, you're a website that has games on it. You can earn money through games that are running on your website. And the kind of ads that actually get served on your various properties are not just one or two types of formats. The ad formats that you can actually use on your website are many. There are rich media ads. There are text ads. There are image and flash ads. And there are video ads. And we'll talk a little bit more as we go along. So how does Google AdSense work? What does that guy look like? I mean, who does he look like? What kind of a person is he? He's an auctioneer. An auction is at the center of how Google AdSense works. So let's take you through the steps of how an AdSense ad would get served. You, as a publisher, will define what kind of ad should show up on your website. You will decide whether the format of the ad should be image, text, video. You decide what kind of targeting an advertiser can use to actually reach their users online. And you could enable special features like the interest based ads. So you define how your inventory needs to be filled with an ad and request an ad from AdSense. On the other side, remember the triangle. On the other side, the advertiser sits. What the advertiser does is he sees your inventory. And uh, you know, he could create placement targeted campaigns targeted to your site, or he could give contextual targeting parameters to his campaigns. He will uh, put the bid that he wants to put for the ads that show up, and generally creates the campaigns that would ultimately show up on your site. What happens next? These two things are made. This is the most important part of AdSense, right? There's an auction that happens each time your website requests for an ad. Each time a request goes to Google, there is a real-time auction where all the eligible ads 
that match your criteria and match advertisers' criteria are pulled together and a real-time auction happens where the highest bidder wins the auction. He doesn't pay the highest price. He pays the second highest price. And that's called a Dutch auction and that's how we charge the advertisers for clicks or impressions that are served on the site. Now this real-time auction is really, really the crux of AdSense. You've got to understand that you know, you have, you know, you can have like one or two uh, auctions happening in auction houses, but this happens billions and billions of times a day. Every time an ad is requested, there is a real-time auction that runs. So it's a fairly complex piece of algorithm that runs in the background. Okay, so an ad was shown. Somebody clicked on the ad. Now who pays for it? Who pays for these ads? The advertiser pays for the ad. Now, you are the website where the ad got published, or that's where the ad got shown. What, do you really want to get into the hassle of going and talking to the advertiser and saying, hey, listen, your ad got published, somebody clicked on an ad, I generated a lead for you, give me this much money based on whatever you created. But no, this is what Google does for you guys. They invoice the uh, they invoice the advertiser and actually create, I mean, they go and collect all that money from advertisers and networks. You have to make the money ultimately. It's ultimately money on your website. And this is what we do when we say, again, it's hassle-free and it's easy. Because once we invoice them, we pay the publisher all the money that got served on your website at the end of every month. A check in the mail at the end of every month. All you had to do was two things. Request for the ad and two, wait for the check in the mail. It's as simple as that. And for the guys who've got websites who are earning money off it and using AdSense, they can vouch for it and maybe you can, we can all have a discussion later on about how this really works. Now the idea behind AdSense is really to show the right ad at the right time, at the right place and to the right person. How do we do this? It's, it's fairly complex, but I'll try and explain to you in simple terms. Uh, Google has access to hundreds and thousands of advertisers. Each time your website makes a request, ads from all these advertisers come into the auction, come into this pool which compete for that one ad impression on your website, right? What this does is it increases competition. Increasing competition can mean only one thing, which is to increase the payment for that, increase the value of that inventory, right? I mean, think about it. You have, I mean, you have your old motorcycle and you want to sell it. You have a couple of guys out there who are part of your auction and who say, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll bid. What do they bid? 10,000 rupees, 15,000 rupees. If you're likely to close it at around 15,000. Let's say you get 1,000 people competing in that auction at that very same time. Are you likely to close it at 15,000 or lower or higher? Much higher, right? Because you're increasing the competition. Sorry. The other thing that is part of the system are innovative targeting technologies. Brinalini in the previous session spoke about the various targeting technology that we have. Uh, there is contextual targeting, there is interest based, there is placement targeting, and there are many, many more innovative kinds of targeting that advertisers have access to, which basically means that once we figure out that your website is about a certain theme or it's got a certain user who has a certain set of interests, and an advertiser is wanting to reach those guys, his ad gets shown to that person. And what this does is it shows the right ad to the right user at the time that he's actually, you know, accessing content about these, these themes. And then there are creative ad formats, which are, which are what we spoke about earlier, which help in engaging the user. Remember, at the core of every Google offering is the user. The user is the center of our attention. 
And as long as you can keep the user happy and you can keep the user, you know, satisfied, everyone benefits. You as a business benefit, advertiser as, as, a, as a business benefits, and Google as a business benefits. It's extremely customizable. AdSense ads can be, you know, customized by you as a publisher. It's not entirely up to the advertiser to show an ad in a certain way. Let's say you have a blue website, which is predominantly blue, and that's the general layout. You can choose the ad format, you can choose the corner types, you can choose background colors, you can choose the color palette, etc. You can choose the ad size and font. It kind of matches, right? Now, if this was a red ad in a blue kind of a website, probably be a little jarring, it'll probably not be the best user experience. And again, the user is king. Say somebody has a pink website, and you can actually change the colors and the ad fonts and the formats, the sizes, etc., depending on what your layout of the website is, right? So it's extremely customizable. It, it can merge very well with what your general UI is all about and how you want to show ads on your website in a very, very non-intrusive way. There are, you know, ads and ads for various media that, that you have. You know, you can have ads for websites, you can have ads on the search results that are shown on your site, you can have ads on video, you can have ads even on your mobile website with the various types of ads, like rich media and text and image. And there are innovations that happen in terms of creatives. There are expandables, there are contextual creatives, you know, there are pre-roll, post-roll and, and interstitial ads, which are video ads, and there are video overlay ads. So the kind of options that you have, the kind of, you know, creative ecosystem and, and innovation that we've done here should benefit you as a business because the advertisers are going to be using all of this and you as a publisher can define what kind of stuff gets shown on your, on your site. Um, so what are the key benefits of Google AdSense? Why should you use Google AdSense? Anyone got any thoughts on that? Gets your business online? Okay. It can, yeah. It can actually help you get your business online because somebody's got to pay the bills, right? Sorry? You guys got to be a, you guys got to be slightly louder. Absolutely. I think that's a good point that he's made here. You don't have to worry about the advertising on your site. Advertising brings in the revenue, but we don't want that hassle to be yours. You run a business, you run a website, worry about the content, because the content is what the user is coming there for. He's not really coming there for the ads. He's coming there for the content, but if he's shown the right ad at the right time, he will click on those ads, right? So, helps you focus. Anyway, so, here are the few, you know, the few points that that actually go into why you should use Google AdSense, or why somebody should benefit from, use, from Google AdSense. One is the hassle-free revenue. You know, like I mentioned, it's fairly hassle-free. You build your website, and you make one request for ads. Each time your page loads, there is a request that goes to Google through code, an ad gets served, somebody runs an auction, somebody goes and invoices the advertisers and the networks, Somebody else goes and collects that money. Somebody else does the accounting. And the magic at the end of it is, who sees the money? Who sees the money at the end of all that happens? It's the publishers, it's you guys. It's you guys who run websites of your own, who run businesses of your own. So, the way you really need to do is, if you have a direct sales team that is selling inventory on your website, this is used as a complementary way to generate more revenue. A direct sales team will typically sell the, you know, very premium slots and maybe offer slightly lower fill rates. On the other hand, AdSense will add to all that revenue that your direct sales team can generate and make more money for you from your website. So it's not really competing with your direct sales teams, 
look at it as something that works in tandem with your direct sales team. It fills up at scale and it generates revenue for every impression that you serve on the website. You get maximum revenue for every impression, like I said. There is extremely high customization. You could decide what kind of ads get shown. You decide what kind of UI should be shown. You decide what kind of targeting the advertiser can use. It's all in your hands. So you have a lot of control. There is obviously continuous innovation that we keep doing. Miranini spoke from an AdWords perspective about the kind of innovations we do. And AdSense is an extension of the same business. It's part of the Google display network where AdWords advertisers' ads get shown on partner websites. And lastly, focus on the user. I mentioned the user is the center and should be the center of all our affection, attention, love, everything. The user is on your website for certain reasons. Give him a good user experience. Show him ads that are relevant, that he sees value in. Once he sees value in the content that he's seeing on your site, including the ads, he's gonna have a good user experience. AdWords is one of the largest networks in the world. We have access to hundreds and thousands of AdWords advertisers who are running search campaigns, who are running display campaigns. What that means again is what we spoke about earlier, where we said the competition increases, revenue from each impression increases. In addition to the advertisers who are part of AdWords, what we also have in AdSense are certain Google certified ad networks. What this does is it, it increases the competition for your ads. It increases some of the ad formats that actually get served on your website, which means more money for you. You have better targeting for advertisers. This is more from an advertiser perspective. You know, an advertiser wants to reach people depending on what they're doing right now, right? Are they browsing certain categories of websites? Are they looking at an auto site? Maybe a Hyundai would like to advertise to them. Or a Maruti would like to advertise to them. Some advertisers are very clear that they want their ads to show up on certain websites. Some of these websites have certain demographic of people coming in there. And they want to reach out to those people. So they can even create placement targeted campaigns. You know, we also track where visitors have been. And to somebody's question, uh, to somebody's question asked a little earlier, we do not collect any personally identifiable information, as Minalini pointed out. But what we do through cookies is know what your interests are. And by knowing what your interests are, we can show you the right ad at a time when you may not be browsing a website about autos. Let's say you went to an auto website, you browsed around, and we figured out that this user, don't know who, is interested in autos. When you're on a site which may be different, it's likely that an auto ad may ultimately get shown to you. So, which means that it's the right ad for that right user at that right time, right? So, these are the kind of innovations that we do. Remarketing, you know, somebody goes to a website, let's say he goes to an e-commerce site and looks around and leaves the website, goes somewhere else. Now, when this guy who's come to an e-commerce site and is now browsing something else, is browsing on a website which serves Google Ads, it could be that the auction lets the ad from that same e-commerce site get shown to the same user, which means that, hey, you were interested in my product, why don't you come back? There are some discounts. Or here's a new product line that we've launched, why don't you take a look at this? So these are, uh, you know, again, based on interest-based advertising, which ties, which ties in very, very well with innovative targeting uh, technology that we actually provide to advertisers to reach to their users. Ad advertisers can also choose the demographic, the time, the geography, et cetera, for targeting. So all those kind of builds into the AdSense network and decides which are the eligible ads. There are more buyers. There are more buyers because there are third-party ad networks. 
uh, we allow people to build display ads through a display ad builder in the AdWords, uh, AdWords front end or the AdWords tool that you have, which means that people are going to be building creatives which are image and flash enabled. You know, it's not easy to get a creative agency to create these for you all the time. But Google offers you that option to build the display ad builder and consequently compete for display ad inventory as an advertiser. There are new formats which are expandables and in-stream videos. There's better targeting because there's interest-based advertising, there's placement targeting, you can, you can put frequency controls, and you have better insights because using analytics, you can actually know what is the brand impact that your, that, you know, your campaigns have been having. You can know through the AdWords tool what, you know, which keywords worked, which keywords didn't work, which sites it worked on, what kind of targeting worked well for you, depending on the kind of campaigns that you create. So because of these insights, advertisers can measure a lot of things, and hence, they are happy about certain things that they see. When you can measure something, you're usually happy at the end of the day. And when they're happy, they end up spending more money, which again means, who sees more money? Publishers. I spoke about how you can complement your direct sales efforts with AdSense. Basically, you can have a direct sales ad showing up in one of the slots, and which, is, which, which your direct sales team is able to sell. And then you have a text ad served through AdSense. Again, customized to the look and feel of your page. Now, a lot of people have, you know, they have some concerns about the kind of ads that get shown. They have concerns about the malware that an ad may have. Somebody mentioned his phone number was passed on. These are very, very undesirable. And we as Google would not, would not do something like this for the users through the ads that are served through our systems. All our ads go through a stringent approval, which is mainly automated. The, some of the ones that are unclear are flagged. The flagged ones are manually checked. And the flag ones are seen by a person and approved or disapproved depending on the content of the ad and the policy compliance. Talking about policy, this is probably, for the guys who use AdSense, it's probably one of their favorite topics. Am I right? Thought so. I see some smiles and sniggers. But anyway, let's, I mean, AdSense policies are, I mean, there are many policies, but at the core of it, it's very simple. Keep the user in the center of your thoughts, because that's why your business online will flourish. And AdSense policies are usually around that, keeping in mind the interest of the users mainly, and also making sure the advertisers are not, well, cheated in any way. You gotta place code on family safe content. I'm sure you all understand why that needs to be done. Think of yourself as an advertiser. Would you like your ad to be shown on content that is not family safe? People spend millions of rupees building a brand. They build an identity and they don't want their ads to get shown on content that is not, or meant only for mature audiences. Avoid unnatural attention. Now, we understand that you know, you're a business, we understand that uh, businesses would need to make money, and there are certain things that people may end up doing which leads to more money, but that is something that we want to control. We want to make sure that while your ad implementations are correct, and we want to ensure that the users are able to see ads and click on them, we don't want them to, clicking on, uh, to click on them accidentally, or bringing their attention to the ads unnaturally. The content is king, and like I said, I can't, I can't really say this enough, but the content that you create on your website is why the user is on your website. The content that he's come to consume is why he's online. Now, as more and more users come online, they're there to make sure that they get good content, they get original content, they get unique content, and something that you can engage them with. 
they're going to keep coming back to your website only if you give them engaging content. You can make money off them through some of the other means one time, twice, thrice. But they're not going to come back if your content isn't good. Your content really has to be the main reason why they're coming back. You need to make sure that it's original and it's not plagiarized. Obviously, there are legal hassles to doing that. And AdSense will not allow ads to ser be served on, on plagiarized or copyrighted content. A lot of people are, ex I, mean, I mean, a lot of your teams and you yourselves are extremely smart and, you know, you can change code. But for best targeting, for the best bang for your buck, you need to make sure that you copy the AdSense code as it is from your console and place it on your HTML file. What that will do is make sure that the right ads get shown, all the right ads compete, and you make the most money again. Please don't create multiple accounts. A lot of people do that. It's, it's an easy thing to do, but remember once, it's not very difficult to figure this out. So publishers need to make sure that they just maintain one account per payee name, and for one website, you should typically have just one account. User-generated content is, again, something that a lot of your websites may have. Ultimately, people are coming onto your sites and you know, expressing their opinions. They're writing stuff as comments to articles you've posted. They're you know, saying good things. They're saying bad things. Sometimes they tend to go a little overboard with the bad things that they say. So you've got to keep on top of all these things. You need to make sure that you are in control of the content that's available on your website. Again, user-generated content can lead to content that is inappropriate, and hence ads against that content is probably a no. So these are the basic things that the AdSense policies are all about. You know, it's, I mean, like I said, it's, it's important that people come to your website because they see value in coming to your website. You know, sites that do not have original content, again, that's a policy violation if you're serving AdSense ads there. Ads which have no content. Some of the ads, I mean, some of the websites have pages which just have ads. And these pages don't have any content. Now, that's, again, a no as far as AdSense policy is concerned. You know, mature content we've already spoken with. Look at the, you know, Look at this, you know, this publisher who says, please click Google Ads to support us. Now, that's clearly requesting people to click ads. Please don't do that. We, don't, we want users to feel engaged with the ads that get shown. It needs to be non-intrusive, only when they're interested, and we believe our targeting technologies can ensure that they're interested, they will click on ads. Please don't add your own content to the ads that get shown. Please don't show pictures next to those text ads. Those pictures are not really part of the ad, but it's been added by a publisher. That's also not allowed. Things like using the wrong product on the wrong, on, the, on, on a certain media. This is a video, and on top of a video, instead of using video ads or the AdSense for video product, they're using AdSense for content. Right? So you have to use the right product at the right time. OK. so. Some of the features of Google AdSense. You as a publisher can control how your inventory is represented out there in the market. And it's a huge market. Like I said, we have hundreds and thousands of advertisers whose ads are running on the Google Display Network. But you as a publisher can control how your inventory is ultimately seen by these advertisers. And how do you do that? First of all, you make sure that you know, your ad planner listing is up to date because that is what a lot of advertisers will see. They'll see the details that you provide. Make sure the, the, the content category is correct. Make sure the information about the site is correct. Make sure the details that you want the advertiser to know about your website is correct. And make sure that the information that you want them to know is true. Uh, you can, you know, you can choose to enable or disable interest-based advertising. You can make sure that, you know, I don't want my users to see interest-based ads. So, like, show me only contextual ads. 
you can enable or disable placement targeting. Where you can say that, allow advertisers to target my site directly. So not only will that mean that advertisers whose ads only contextually match the content on your site, only their ads will, will be eligible, but uh, the placement targeted ads will not be eligible to show up. Now, enabling these features, this is just a small note about enabling these features and disabling these features, is the more you disable features which will eliminate ads from the auction, the lesser revenue you are likely to make. So please remember that, like I said, you know, you remember that example I took about you trying to sell your motorcycle. You have two people bidding for it, you make X amount. You have 100 people bidding for it, probably make 2X amount. Similarly, the more ads you allow into the auction, the more ads you allow them to compete for that inventory, the more money you're likely to make. Enabling image formats, enabling all the formats, enabling different targeting technologies or different targeting uh, options will increase that. Allowing Google certified ad networks to compete for ads, uh, for the ad inventory that you have. Will again increase auction pressure, will ensure that you make more money off the content on your website. So ultimately, you as a publisher are, are deciding how, ad, how an ad should come on your website. You're in complete control. You can even filter out competition. You know, you could, like, you could be an e-commerce company and your competitor is advertising and contextually it's a match. Contextually, his ads may end up showing up on your website. But you can actually choose to not show ads from a certain advertiser. You can choose to filter out sensitive categories. You don't want certain category of ads coming in. You may, you may just like remove that checkbox there and that's it. Ads from that category will not show up. So you're again, defining the kind of ads that ultimately get shown on your page without harming your brand or without harming your business interests. You know, you could block competition through URLs or through subdomains, etc. Once you block them, ads from there will not show up at all on your website. Similarly, sensitive categories, you can block politics, you can block, maybe you don't want ringtones because it's low quality ads, maybe you don't want dating ads for business reasons, ads will not show up. You have an advertiser review center, it's called the ARC. I'm sorry, this is the old interface. I haven't updated the slides with the new interface, but what this allows you to do is, you know, you can actually see all the placement targeted ads that get served on your website. You can choose to allow or, dis or disallow any of the campaigns that are actually targeted to your website at that point in time. You can choose to block by advertiser or just one particular ad. Maybe you don't like one of the ads that is showing. Maybe you can allow them any of the others. Again, adds to the kind of control that you have for your website. Google is a very data-based, you know, very data-oriented company. We want to make sure that we provide as much data as possible to you for you to use to grow your business, to do more with your business. And what we do is through you know, through the data that we provide, allow you to generate insights that will help you make decisions to grow your revenues. You might want to see how are the different units and channels performing, right? You have various ad slots on your page. You might want to see is the ad unit on the top left performing better or is the ad unit in the middle panel somewhere in the middle of the page performing better or is it performing better when I move this ad unit to the masthead or the top of the page, right? You might also want to know where are my most valuable visitors coming from? I'm generating money from ads, but who is giving me the maximum revenue? What kind of users, where are they coming from? Where are the users clicking ads on my page, right? In terms of somebody said heat map of the page in one of the earlier sessions. From an ad perspective, what is the heat map of the page? No, where are people going out? At the time of going out, it could be important. You could choose to do either of two things. 
you could choose to increase the number of ads that get shown there because people are going out. You might as well make money from them, right? They're not going to they're not going to be on your site for much longer. So you may choose to monetize them a little more, or you could change the flow that your user goes through to ensure that they're not losing, uh, or you're not losing that visitor, right? So there are various insights that you can generate from the data that is provided. How does this data come to you? Through the AdSense advanced reports. We have you know, a very, very robust front end for AdSense. Like I mentioned, got revamped in, in 2010. And trust me, it's, it's very, very detailed. You can slice and dice a lot of data. And it's going to give you a lot of information that you can actually use to make these decisions. You have AdSense reporting even in analytics. A lot of people here use analytics. How many people use analytics? That's, so you've seen the AdSense tab on the left side somewhere, right? Now you can actually link your AdSense account to analytics and get a lot more insight about, you know, what's, how is AdSense performing and where are users coming from, where, they, where am I generating more money, etc. You can create, in the AdSense advanced reports, you can create reports based on day and date, based on various, like I said, you can slice and dice the data. And in analytics, you can, we can get details about, you know, what kind of traffic generated, how much money, where did I serve most impressions, what kind of AdSense impressions were served to users which came from here, etc. Now, AdSense is the larger product, but when I mentioned some time back about using the right product for the right media, what I meant was to use the right product amongst one of these. So you have actions for content. Actions for content is what gets, is what serves ads on your website contextually. So these are, think of it more as display advertising. Your website could be part of the Google display network where actions for content ads get served on your website. These actions for content ads can be image ads, they can be text ads, flash, HTML, video, you have actions for search, just like ads get served up against Google search results on the google.com homepage. How many of you have seen ads on the google.com homepage? On the homepage? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, so I was talking about the ads getting served on the search result page. We don't serve ads on the homepage, by the way. Uh, AdSense for search will allow you to serve ads against search search results that are listed on your site. Now these search results could be your own search results. You know, you could be an e-commerce site. You may, have, you may have people searching for certain products on your website and you have search result listings. AdSense for search ads can actually get served up against that. Now these are text ads. AdSense for search will also work if you have your site search or a web search option offering for your users. So you can offer an AdSense, uh, sorry, you can offer a you should have the rights to monetize it. If you've acquired the rights to display it on your website, you should also have the rights legally to monetize those, those videos. So it's important that you are aware of the fact, from a legal standpoint, can you make money off those videos? Because, because somebody else may own the rights to those videos, and that may not be the best option. And AdSense for games, again, you can have, people have desktop games, and you can serve ads against those games, make more money. And AdSense for mobile content, the world is going mobile. If you don't have a mobile website, it's time you got one. And we're going to make sure that while you do that, you still generate revenue off your mobile website through the actions for mobile content. And let me tell you from my experience, advertising on smartphones has actually, uh, not in terms of sheer volume, because the volume on mobile browsing isn't as high as on desktop, but the kind of money that you can make off mobile websites, especially on smartphones, is quite phenomenal. And it's set to grow even more. Now, these are the basic standard sizes that we serve. Uh, some of them are, you know, well, most of them are the standard, I mean, all of them are standard IAB sizes. Uh, there are some additional sizes for mobile, which are not really listed here, I think. Yeah, they're not listed. We have a 300 by 50. Uh, some of the formats are listed. 
we have special formats for AFV, which is AdSense for video and AdSense for games. So these are the various ad formats and sizes that you can actually request on your site. Create your site accordingly so that the relevant ads get shown. See what sizes work for you, what looks good from a UI perspective, and make money of those. Now, some of the large websites that use AdSense fairly extensively in India, just list, we've just listed them out. So just to share with you some, you know, some data, we have, you know, we took, we took a look at the top 1,000 websites in India, and we tried to see what is our reach in those websites. And we figured that we have roughly 80% reach there, which means about 200 sites, 196 to be very precise, are not using AdSense. Well, 80%, fairly good, right? And the top 1,000 sites, which is the bulk of maybe the internet traffic that, that, that is online. Now, of those 200 or 196 odd sites, we did a further deep dive and we figured that about 140 of them do not serve ads. And there are various reasons why certain of these, why certain sites would not serve ads. And ICICI Bank, for example, would not serve ads on its website. It's a corporate website. Some of the government websites would not serve ads. So if you just look at the sites that serve ads, out of the 196, 140 of them were like that which means that what our reach ultimately translates into is a staggering 93%. 93% of the top 1,000 sites that serve ads use Google AdSense. If, if it was something that didn't work for them, we wouldn't have 93%. So think about it. There must be something right that AdSense is offering to these businesses. And I'd encourage you to think along the same lines to see if it is something that you'd like to use for your businesses to generate more and more money from the content that you put up out there. Uh, briefly about some of the other Google publisher solutions, well, quickly I'll just take you through this. Uh, we have, you know, mobile sites are monetized through AdSense, like I said, video is monetized through AdSense for video. What's an important part of this additional thing that I'm showing you is the double click for publishers. Now, double click for small publishers or for small businesses can work as an optimization tool. While all, you know, while mainly it is an ad serving tool, you as a publisher would use double click to serve ads on your website. You could configure your direct sales ads on your website. You could configure networks that are serving ads through double click. And make sure that your monetization is ultimately optimized to the full. Sorry. Uh, you know, when you have direct sales, do any of your websites have direct sales? Do you have direct sales for your websites? In which case, I'll just skip that part. All right. So how does this work? Typically, a website or a medium-sized business may have direct sales. So they'll have sales teams going out into the market, reaching out to certain advertisers, getting, getting them to run campaigns directly at a certain cost, right? Uh, there, is, there is some guarantee of fulfillment and scheduling and how many impressions, et cetera, right? So how AdSense will do is from the unsold inventory, you can actually fill all the unsold inventory through the Google AdSense ads, which will ensure that for every impression you're making money, not just the ones that were sold directly through the direct sales team, but also through the unsold ones where Google will find that advertiser to actually show the ad on your website. DFP offers extensive targeting capabilities. You can actually say that if a user is coming from this device on this OS at this time, show him a certain ad, or a certain direct sales ad, or ad from this network A, or from network B. So you can actually, again, configure double click to show the kind of ad that you want to show. If you've, you know, if you've managed to sell 
some direct sales ads to an, an, an advertiser where you say that I will target only the MacBook users or Mac OS or iOS users, you can actually do that through double click. For every time that a request comes in from an iOS user, you can serve that person's ad or that advertiser's ad. And for the rest, you can use the other options. So you are in complete control. You ensure that you have a lot more control over your inventory when you use double click for publishers. Right? You can define where the user is coming from and show him an ad from there. So you can take different campaigns for Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta and show the relevant ad. A very important part of double click is dynamic allocation. Now, how does dy this dynamic allocation work? So, there, you know, there could be advertisers who are directly booked with your sales team, but there are no guarantees for delivery, and they've bought it at, a, let's say, a certain, you know, two dollar rate, for example. Right? There is an ad that needs to be served. Your directly sold ad, we figure that two dollars is the maximum that somebody is willing to pay. At that point of time, what happens is DFP will take this directly sold two dollar ad, bring it into something, well, some system where it will then compete with networks and other sources of ads, dynamically allocate what is the right ad to show for that particular impression, which means that this two dollar ad will then compete with hundreds and thousands of other ads. And only if it pays you more than each of those is when that directly sold ad. Because you are not, you've not guaranteed that impression to somebody. But it's your website and you, make to, and you need to make money off your website. So DFP will allow you to do that. We'll need to make sure that you generate the most revenue. So that kind of brings me to the end of uh, what AdSense is all about. Uh, there are some links here which you can refer to when you go back. Uh, you can tweet about these links, you can share it with your teams back in your offices or with your friends. Um, let's play some game now. I think I feel like giving out some more mugs. You guys want more mugs? Yes. You sure? Yes. I can't hear you guys. Yes. All right, I guess you must be hungry, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> no, not yet. Okay, those who are hungry can leave. I have fewer people to give the mugs to. So, let's play a game called Fact or Fiction. Let's figure out what are urban legends and what are proven truths. Just raise your hands and I'm going to ask, because don't shout out the answer now. All right? In terms of order of being served, the first ad impression is the most important one. Now, I want you to tell me if it's a fact or fiction. Somebody put up their hands and give me the reason behind it. If you don't give me the reason, I'm not going to really pay attention. All right, let's, let's have the one in the back. Yeah? You, you, you. No, it's not the most important. And why not? Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, we yeah. request you all to kindly walk over to the mics so that everybody is audible. Yeah. If you could just walk up to the mics, that would make, make more sense. Thanks. Guys, just walk up to the mics. Uh, and we just have about three minutes as we're running short of time. Yeah. The lunch is served. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. The first impression is the most important is impression. The most important one? Okay. As we have seen in the earlier slides, uh, earlier. Uh, examples given in AdSense that the more appropriate ad gets uh, recognized by the potential customers. So fairly, fairly close. I think I'll give you this mug. It's true. It is the most important because ultimately the first ad is the most relevant and is probably the one that is going to pay you the highest. So you've got to figure out where it is that you're, you're getting highest CTR and try and make sure that in the order of serving you show the first ad at that spot where you're getting the highest CTR? It's right side. You can click on your own ads as long as you're using any test sample publisher ID. True or false? Quickly, from, from your place, true or false? True. 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 OK. Nobody gets a mug for this. No, you can't click on your own ads. I just told you about AdWords policies, AdSense policies. You can't click on 
on any ads that are shown on your website because that would be incorrectly charging the advertiser. Uh, you can create, you know, you can go to the ad review center and click on ads to see where these ads take you, etc. You can figure out, you can do all the tests on the ad review center and not otherwise. The number of page impressions my site recorded through AdSense is the same as the number of ad impressions. Fiction. Somebody said fiction? Yeah? Why is that? Quickly? Was that a wild guess? Wild guess. No. No. No, no. Sorry? If it's a single ad? See, typically you'll have, uh, I can give you this mug because you got the fiction, for, right? Yeah. The, so you can have up to three ad units on a page. You can have, uh, you know, you can have three ads. So for every impression, you can actually have three ad impressions being recorded. And hence, one page impression equal to three ads and do the math. But, you know, over time, my participation in AdSense ensures that my search ranking goes up. False? Why? Why? Good stuff. You've convinced me enough. So the Google search and the AdSense crawlers are completely different from each other and they do not talk to each other. CPM ads can be in text or image format. Is that true or false? Yes. First of all, what are CPM ads? Cost per impression. Cost per thousand impressions. M in Roman is thousand. Million. No, not million impressions. It's thousand impressions. <laughs> it's a fact. Did somebody say fact? I didn't hear somebody say fact. You heard fact. You, you said fact. So these can be text or image ads. It's better to choose my ad network based purely on eCPM. eCPM is expected cost per thousand impressions. So is this true or false? Fact. 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 False. Make up your mind. Okay, one, one fact. Who said fact? Quickly, why? Because it earns money? More money. Why false? Okay, it makes business sense. Why false? Somebody said false. Why false? Then what's it dependent on? Okay. <laughs> Since you're the only one who said false, I'm going to give you this. You need to consider the fill rate, right? And the fill rate will decide how much revenue you ultimately make. A network giving you $3 is not, I mean, eCPM may not fill up most of your inventory. may just fill up 25% of your inventory. Whereas a network giving you $1.5 will actually fill up 90% of your inventory. So if you do the math, you end up making more money with the network that, is, that gave you lesser eCPM but higher fill rate. So it's a function of both. Anyway, thank you. I'll Take one or two questions and then I will close it. Uh, and I will be available with my colleague Naresh uh, later on in the day. I don't know what time it okay, will be. Okay, uh, one and two. We have the mic here. Yeah, thank you. Questions. Rest of you all, thank you so much. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be running a workshop where, where we can answer your questions in more detail. We can get into your specific questions. And if you have any account specific yeah. que you know, questions. I have one I, question. Is, uh, make like it generic. Not, yeah. not specific to your account? Generic. And yeah. uh, it's like we have ads going on, like running on our website. Do we have any plans or ideas wherein all the commercial websites, because they are uh, like hindering not to have these ads coming on their business websites. So they, is there any script kind of thing wherein we can't show the ad, but we say, still have the AdSense code placed into the website? You, you want to place you want to place AdSense code onto some other website? Onto the website to get revenues coming in, but I don't want to see those AdSense uh, tests or images coming up, showing up on my website. 
I am sorry, I didn't get your question. You want to place actions, if I got your question, you want to place actions code on your friend's website. On my website. On your own website. Website. You don't want to see actions. Texts, banners, or else whatever the audios or videos so are So what do you want out. to see? Then what kind of ads will get served? So only the script should be there, visible. How will you earn website. money? No, that, yeah. that's, the, that's how. No, you can't. Can we earn it? Unfortunately, no. Unless you show the ads on your website, those ads have no meaning for the user. I do have a website, but I don't have an AdSense account. I'm sorry. I heard that okay. I do have a website, but I don't have an AdSense account. I heard that it's very difficult to get an uh, AdSense account from Google. So, what should I do? How much time would it take to get approved from Google and what should difficult. I do? It's not difficult to get an AdSense account. You need to sign up uh, at google.com slash AdSense. But Google should approve my site. Yes, right? there will be a turnaround time where they will evaluate the application May for the AdSense account. The number account. of posts and the content, how much? They will evaluate a lot of stuff, not just the number of posts. They will evaluate the content, etc. And that's how it will get approved. I can answer those questions later. I'm sorry, guys. Oh. We're running out of time. You guys must be hungry as well. So thank you very much.